friends, hello everyone. I am glad to welcome you to my channel. Today, I decided to write down such a small introduction before the lesson and tell you a little bit about what we will be doing in the near future in the drawing, what videos, what training programs we will have. Well, you know, I want to say that in my classes I adhere to the program of academic drawing. If you type an academic drawing program in Yandex, you will always fall out in the first lesson that students draw a cube. And academic drawing begins with this, with learning how to build simple geometric shapes. Well, in general, I decided not to deviate from this, and now the next cycle of lessons will be devoted to this. We will learn to draw objects with you. It will be a cube, a ball, a cylinder, and a hexagon. You know, I would like to say a few more words about how important this is. This is really very important. This is such a good foundation that you lay in yourself as a draftsman. Learn to draw simple geometric objects. If you compare it with something household, you know, in order to learn how to cook a salad, you first need to learn there, for example, to cook potatoes, cook carrots, then it's there to peel eggs, cut into cubes or how. And then you decide that you are going to cook Olivier or vinaigrette there today, or some other salad. That is, first we start learning the basics, and then here's the oozette. From this, we are already making up what we need. If you learn how to draw a cube, a cylinder, a ball, well, this is the main thing. A cube, a cylinder, and a ball are probably the main ones. But I will also include a cone and a hexagon in this cycle. Now, if you learn how to do this, then you will be able to make still lifes from these objects. And not just still lifes from these objects, but also still lifes from simple household objects of some kind. In fact, in fact, our whole world consists of these geometric shapes, no matter how strange it may sound. The whole interior, exterior, there are parallelopipes everywhere, cubes everywhere. The human head also consists of. In other words, it can be decomposed into geometric shapes. There's some kind of vase, it's a cylinder, some kind of kettle, it can be a cone, or a cylinder with a handle, with a spout. That is in this way, you do not think that by learning to draw a cube, you are learning to draw a cube. By learning to draw a cube, you are learning to draw houses, you are learning to draw stools, you are learning to draw a sofa, a table, and so on, and many, many, many objects. And learning to draw a ball, thereby you learn to draw a very large number of objects, too. Some fruits, apples, heads, and many, many, many other things. So I assure you that it is really important to learn how to draw objects. And I want to say separately about the cube. The cube is both, you know, as simple as it is, and very difficult to learn how to draw, and I understand that without a teacher, it may probably take you longer. But nevertheless, your constant practice and perseverance will certainly give results. And you know, today I'm going to tell you how to draw a cube. In front of you will be a reference to where I am. From there I will draw it. But in general, I recommend you to draw a cube from a live cube. Here, I have a cube here, we draw on. It's plaster, it's heavy. I bought it in a red pencil. I think that any art store sells these figures. But you know, if there is no way to buy it, then it can very easily be made from white cardboard, from Whatman yourself. Look at how to do it online, and you will have a cube that you can dry. I recommend you to draw it from different angles. Put, for example, on the floor, put on a stool, then draw, for example, put on the table. At different heights, your angles will change. And it is necessary to change not only the heights, but also the direction. You can put it like this, you can put it like this, you can put it like this, you can put it evenly. You know, I'm even practicing now, putting, for example, a cube in some kind of glass, 
or in some kind of container. In exactly this way, I don't know, my glass will hold up now. Well, in general, you understand, we need something more, something more stable, not a simple cup. So please, draw it from different angles. Here you twist it in completely different ways, at different heights. Make lots and lots of sketches. I will build it once, and at the same time, I will show you how I stroke it. But you know, hatching won't be so important here. The main thing for you now is to learn to understand this construction, so that you sort of twist and turn in your head. You know, at the heart of everything, if we talk about the interior, exterior, is the ability to draw these simple ones. By the way, I paint interiors beautifully. I worked as an interior designer for one year in my life and painted many, many different rooms every day. Maybe someday we will come to the fact that on this channel, I will tell you about. In other words, we will start some kind of course on interior design. It's really, really very interesting. It's not that easy, but nevertheless, it can also be learned. What do I want to say? For example, if we have a chair, we need to draw a chair, and you are in your head, you also need to develop spatial thinking. And so drawing a cube from different angles, at different levels, it lays in you very well exactly this spatial thinking. Because when, for example, you look at a catalog, well, let's say a catalog of some furniture, and you have a chair drawn, a front view and a side view, and you need to take a three-quarter view in the interior and put it not straight, for example, but below the horizon level or vice versa, above the horizon level, then this skill will come in handy here. Because I think there are people here who don't just need to learn how to draw beautifully from a picture, you understand, yes, that it's much, that it's not difficult, it's very easy, you can learn it very quickly. Here, namely, to learn to imagine an object in your head, to turn it around in your head. Here is a stool, they give it to you like this, and you have to turn it, yes, turn it upside down, and draw it from this angle. Either a chair, they show it to you directly, you are already turning it over in your head by three quarters there. Or you turn it over in general, or you put this chair on the floor at all, and draw it like this, as you already imagine it. It's a cool skill, I want to tell you. It will definitely come in handy, and I'm aiming to tell you how to achieve this. And one of the secrets is to make many, many, many sketches of simple shapes. Well, first we start with simple shapes, then we will somehow complicate it, draw a vase, draw some bottles, pots, maybe. You can do exactly the same at any stage. Here's what I'm going to tell you in this lesson. I'm going to tell you about how to draw a cube, and in the next, there will be other objects. Then there will be maybe some household items, bottles, a vase, pots, and with any subject, you can, in principle, follow this advice. That is, you take it, twist it in different ways, put it on the floor, on a stool, somewhere on a table, on a closet, and draw sketches. Quick, easy sketches. And this will certainly benefit you. All right, my dears, stop talking. Let's get started. Now I'm going to tell you how to draw a cube. So friends, well, let's get started. So look, we need to know one such rule, that parallel lines at the horizon level converge at one point. Here in the academic drawing, there is such a direct concept and expression. In general, in general, it seems that some kind of absurdity, how is that even possible? Parallel lines converge to one point at the horizon level. After all, we know from geometry lessons that parallel lines will never intersect with us. I'm going to explain what's going on. Imagine that you are crossing the railway tracks, but everyone has done it at least once in their life, I think. And you're looking at the horizon level. This is the horizon. I hope you can clearly see what I'm drawing. I'm trying to be brighter. 
rails, there are sleepers. In other words, we understand that these rails will never intersect with us, right? We understand that they are parallel to each other, but it is when we stand and look at the horizon that we see this picture. In other words, parallel lines converge at one point at the horizon level. In general, you may ask, what does the cube have to do with it at all? You know, absolutely all objects obey the laws of perspective, and regardless of what we draw, we must take this principle into account. Let's take the same horizon. I know that, in general, we always need to understand where we have the horizon relative to what we draw. Just imagine, you put a cube on a stool, you yourself are sitting on a stool, yes, and you look at the cube, where is your horizon? The horizon, I'll tell you, it will be at eye level all the time. If you break the wall that's there behind this cube, another wall here, to see where we have the horizon, it will be at eye level. When you get up, the horizon will also be at eye level. And since you are sitting, yes, on a stool, the cube is standing on a stool, you understand that the cube is now, because it is below your eyes. It turns out it is below the horizon, and we will draw it below the horizon. If we extend the faces of the cube, then these same faces will also converge at one point. But the only thing is at the horizon level. The only point is that the cube has two vanishing points, if we compare it with a railway relative to a railway. Yes, the railroad had one vanishing point. The cube here has more like faces, more straight lines. Well, this is the kind of cube it turns out. Let me circle a little bolder what we see, what we should see, There are facets that we don't see. By the way, here are the faces that we don't see. We will definitely draw them with you too. Well, here is such a cube turned out. I mean what? Let me say again what I did. I lengthened the edges of the cube, and at the horizon level, they converged into one point. On this side is the vanishing point, and on this side is the vanishing point. In other words, from here we can conclude that these lines, this line, this line, this line, this line, they are narrowing. And these four faces of the cube, they are also narrowing. The vertical faces will not narrow in any way with each other, but they will shrink. So let's imagine that we can have a vertical one. Yes, for example, we will draw a lamppost here. What do you think will be the size of this lamppost? at the horizon level. That's right, it will turn into a single point. At the horizon level, everything turns into one point. The next pillar from it, it will be a little smaller, the next one even smaller, then even smaller, and so on, until at the horizon level, it all converges into one point. That's the picture, right? These faces of the cube are vertical, they are like lampposts. The further away from us, the less. In other words, this is the edge it is closest to, so it means it is the most. It's a little further away, so it's a little smaller. But that face is the smallest, and it is the furthest from us, like the farthest, for example, pillar. Friends, and now I would like to show some works on this topic. Here is the lower diagram, a perspective on two vanishing points. This is about the cube that I built. And on the right, on the left, a little further, two more cubes. These are the kinds of jobs you can do at home yourself. Train, do below the cube in horizon level, do at the cube in horizon level, do above the cube in horizon level. Try to make the cube lines a little brighter than the construction lines. Make the construction lines pale. And here's the next job. Look carefully, I really like it. In other words, you draw the horizon and then arbitrarily make nine cubes like this. Here you can also do such a task. Try to draw through, that is, those faces that you do not see, 
you also draw. This is a very useful exercise. And this scheme, these lines of construction, you, of course, do not draw on your works. You just keep it all in your head. They won't fit on any sheet format. I've shown you a diagram here, but, of course, we're going to draw on a larger scale now. And these lines at the vanishing point, they naturally will not fit on your sheet format. If you draw the subject compositionally competently, with respect to the format and size of the sheet, then in this case, the vanishing points on the surface of the sheet, on the area of the sheet, do not fit. I draw, of course, with respect to the whole sheet, a very small sketch here, so they fit me. The next point is the main one. This is the main thing. Of course, we will talk about it in more detail later. We will, as it were, train on this. But in fact, this principle is based on drawing a cube and everything related to a cube, a parallelopiped and so on. And you need these schematics, as it were, so that you have them in your head all the time. The second point is the composition. But you know, when we have one cube, then in fact the composition here is very simple. So what do we need to know? We need to know that it is not very small, our cube, so that it is not very large, but it is of some comfortable medium size, so that it's convenient for us to look at it. And the second point, it's not easy to place an object in the center, or rather, it's not just a good shape to make it, but it's also good to try to place it correctly, yes, On the right and on the left, we should have approximately the same distance, and on the top bottom, we should also have approximately the same distance. You know, if you do a little more on top, in principle, it's fine. We all walk on the ground, and we are just so arranged psychologically. We are comfortable when there is more air from above than from below, more space. But if we do the opposite, we will raise it a little higher, then immediately it feels like the object has taken off. Somehow, the ceiling presses low on this cube and causes some discomfort to the audience. Well, let's, given all this, we are now going to try to build a cube with you. The cube that we are going to build now on your screen. I took another leaf. It's a little more dense for me. This is an ordinary Goshnikovsky Whatman. In any stationery, such sheets are sold. So, well, I start all the time from the front edge. You know, you can just throw lines first. Let you have some of them. They may be a little hairy. Well, I mean not one line, right? Here I am now in different directions. Here I select it so that it is. So that I like it, so that everything is smooth. It's okay if the lines are still hairy. Then we will remove them all this hairiness. Try to immediately draw those faces that you do not see. So I'm sorry. In fact, it's quite inconvenient to draw on outstretched hands. And you understand, yes, that if I draw as I usually do, leaning forward a little, then I will block the camera with my head. Therefore, we have to try somehow. I decided to subtract a little. In general, this is normal. When you draw, you stop periodically, move two meters away from your work. If you are on an easel, Draw and see what you get. And sometimes you have to tweak a little. Yes, I have these here. First, I took this eraser, which was on the table, Kakiner's. I cut it diagonally all the time. That is, here is an eraser. Here I have it a little bit already. Well, it has been washed many times. Rectangular if the eraser cut it like this. You will have two erasers, and you will have one of them, or rather, 
both will be with sharp corners like these, which are very easy to erase and very easy to clean up. That's exactly if we are talking about the hairiness of the line. Here we need some moments, for example, I take once and remove the excess with plastic. You know, I'll say a few more words that the guys and I use a simple thread. Here I do not know how I have not seen teachers do this, but I will tell you this little secret. Here is such a thread. What does it allow us to do? First of all, of course, we cannot build according to the ruler. We need to learn how to draw straight lines by hand. And in order to somehow check yourself how smooth the line is, you can do this with threads. If some kind of wavy line has turned out like this, or that we put at one point at another point and look at whether the smooth line coincides with this thread i have such carnations at the top of each easel and there is a thread on this carnation all the time and we check the evenness of the line first of all and the second point is that we check the hairiness of the line but now of course as a teacher i have a more or less tolerable cube with more or less tolerable lines. Usually students have quite hairy lines. That's what the line should be. This can be easily determined with the help of a thread. You should have a line such that when you close the line with a thread, you should have the feeling that it is not there at all. That is, nothing sticks out on the right, on the left. If you see what you have on the right, that is, we also check our lines for hairiness thanks to this thread. If you have something on the right and on the left, you see something on the thread, you take a sharp eraser. Eraser, by the way, I also have such a thing as sharpening an eraser. When the very round ones are erased here, we cut it again so that the tips are sharp. This plastic, by the way, now it would be possible to do such a circumcision with it. But I'm not going to get distracted by that right now. So we just remove all unnecessary, with the help of plastic. And the second point. Well, not the second point, one more point. I want to tell you that about the thickness of the lines, and in general about the lines that we are building, which we are not building. We build all the lines, everything you see, and even what you don't see. In academic drawing, we learn to look at objects as if. It's as if we look through them, and see those facets that we don't see live and necessarily draw them. These are the facets that we do not see. We have these lines built quite easily and airily. They are very light and they are certainly paler than the main lines. And those facets that we can see, then of course we already draw them more vividly, more boldly. And when I am already satisfied with my construction, then I take in simply those facets that we see, I circle again more vividly. Well, not straight, you know, black, no, you don't have to do that. In the end, we have to shade these faces as well. That's exactly what should not be visible, as I say. There are no lines in nature. They exist only at our jobs and only temporarily. Now I have built it, and then I will be hatching, and these lines will be removed in the hatching. And in the end, I have to learn how to shade so that the viewer who then watched my cube did not have the feeling that I was building it at all, so that he would have a feeling as if I took and immediately shaded him. Well, this is the kind of cube we got, and you know, I'm going to start hatching it now. Friends, you know, in this lesson, I decided not to write down an explanation of how I stroke, because I got a video for an hour at all. But in the next lessons, when we draw other geometric shapes, I will already explain the hatching, how it is done, how the plaster is hatched, the direction, and so on. Now you can just watch an accelerated video of what I'm doing. I start with a dark one, with a dark edge, and gradually cover the entire cube in tone. You know, a little more, let's say a couple of words. After all, we will run through the construction from beginning to end, where to start anyway. I started from the frontmost vertical face, and from it, 
I took two faces of the cube to the right and two faces of the cube to the left and I, which are considered parallel as it were, but at work they narrow a little to the right and narrow to the right, tending to the vanishing point, and the left faces of the cube tend to the left vanishing point and also narrow. As for the vertical faces, the front face is the highest. The face on the right will be a little smaller, there is about a centimeter difference there. And the face on the left will also be slightly smaller, because it is further away, and the smallest vertical face of the cube will be the one that we don't see, which I have semi-transparently drawn now. This, my dear ones, is the basis. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. Please ask your questions in the comments. Write what you liked, what you didn't like. I will be happy to answer all your questions. And in the next lesson, we will try to draw a hexagon with you.